Hello, friends. Great to see you. Pastor Pete here at Abundant Life Church in Lakewood, Washington. It's Wednesday, the 30th of November, 2022. And uh, as is our usual pattern, it's time for some coffee. So grab your coffee, um, open up your Bible. Um, you know, you might want to open up the First Chronicles 16.8. Probably not a place that a lot of us get to quite often. But uh, Chronicles tells some amazing stories of how God used and delivered his people and uh, and how his people responded to him. So um, let's get to it. Recently at one of our church prayer meetings, which we have a couple times a month, all church prayer meetings, we have a lot of, we probably throughout the week have seven or eight different small prayer meetings going on as well as our church Sunday service. But we have two bigger church prayer meetings, Sunday nights, the second and fourth Sundays. We get a good portion of the church out and... Um, since we just finished Thanksgiving a week ago, um, we stayed in that mood, in that mode of Thanksgiving. And I want to encourage you again today. Um, but I want to relate to you a little bit of the discussion that we had in our prayer meeting before our prayers. Our prayers that night were focused and our worship that night was focused exclusively on giving thanks to God. Being thankful for who He is and what He's done and what He's promised us. Um, the ways that He has um, provided, uh, but also um, just understanding that we have a relationship with God and, and we should be thankful for that. And, and so part of the discussion that came up was there's a phrase, it's a phrase, there's in, in many, many Bible verses in the Old Testament. Um, let me read to you from um, uh, Psalm 107. This phrase, though, is used many, many times, 35 plus times it's in the, in the Old Testament scriptures. It says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he's good. His steadfast love endures forever. And uh, that's used over and over and over again. It's a, it's, a, it's a beginning place. It's almost, in a, if you were to take it in parallel to what when the disciples asked Jesus, the apostles did, teach us how to pray like you do, he started off by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And it's similar to that. And it's, it begins with us recognizing that God himself is good. And we should give him thanks because he's good and because his steadfast love endures forever. And so that's, that's used quite commonly. And it was a common thing stated in worship in, in those times and, and needs to be reinfused back into our worship constantly. So, um, so we started, we looked at a lot of different verses in the Bible and we prayed, we prayed out the things of God. But let me take you to, um, uh, uh, beyond that, we, we looked at a Bible verse in 1 Chronicles where I asked you to go to before. 1 Chronicles 16, verse 8. Why don't you take a minute and turn there. I'm just going to read first four, these four verses, 8 through 12. And then we'll break down some of the words that we find there that relate to giving thanks. So it says this, 1 Chronicles 16, 8 through 12. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who speak the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. Well, there is some amazing wisdom and advice, direction, focus. David wrote this because he was so thankful for salvation. And he goes on to talk about the things that God has done and the ways that God has saved him. But he's given direction to his people, saying this is what we should do. We should give thanks and call upon him and sing praises. So I plucked four words out of here. Thanks. Praises, glory, and remember. Verse 8, give thanks to the Lord. Well, this the Hebrew word, and please forgive me on all my pronunciation of the Hebrew and the Greek. Please, I know I'm not getting it right. It's yada, Y-A-D-A, -A, yada, thanks. It means praise. It mean, and but, but more than just having it, more the concept for me that really came through is more than just being thankful. That is, I'm full of thanks. It talks about giving our praise. It talks about confessing. It's like, it wasn't me that did any of this. It was God. I confess that only God is worthy of being praised. 
and thanked for the wonderful things he did. And in many churches, churches, ours included, we raise our hands in praise. We, we oftentimes exalt him. We, we say, thank you, God, and we praise him for the things he's done. And we're singing our worship songs quite often when it talks about Jesus and his sacrifice and the way he lived in his resurrection. Many of us are, are compelled to, at that time, to lift our hands because we're giving additional thanks. And this word of thanks, this yada word, means to literally to throw things, to, to propel them, to send them forth. Not just to hold on to that thanks, but to give it back. The second word, it says, sing praise to him. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and tell of his wondrous works. It's interesting that um, it's not just the words that we speak. This, this, this particular word for praises, because remember the first words are sing, sing to him, and then sing praises. The sing praises talks about instruments, specifically musical stringed instruments. And that really implies to me that we engage our whole body. We engage in making of music in a way of giving thanks. That when we do that and do it well, God is pleased with that. The third word I want to point out, verse 10, says, Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Glory. Halal. H-A-L-A-L. Halal. And this means, the underneath definition means to praise again. So we have praise in the thanks, and we have praise in the music, and now we have praise in our experience that when we are filled with joy, there's praise that should come forth, but it's a different kind of praise. It's a boasting. It's a celebrating. It's so strong and powerful and exuberant that it's really like raving. It's like you can't even begin to understand how great our God is. That's what this glorying in the holiness of God's name that his name, and we're attached to him. We glory, we praise him, we boast about him. And then finally in verse 12, it says, Remember the wondrous works that he's done, his miracles and the judgments that he uttered. This word remember, zakar, Z-A-K-A-R. It means to consider and declare. So remembering isn't just sitting at home, looking through the pictures from that wonderful trip. It's, it's and, and having the fond memories. It's actually projecting what you remember out. It's remember his wondrous works. It's, it's, they, they come back to our minds, but we then declare them. There's a, a physical activity that is involved with this. All of these are action words, and David is saying over and over again, we need to be about this. When we're given thanks, it's got to be outward. It's got to be so that other people can know. Not just thanking God, but other people around us knowing that it is God that we give thanks to. Now, in the New Testament, there's a similar concept. Um, and the word that's most commonly used in the Greek for giving thanks is eucharisto, or the word from which we get eucharist. It, it also means to give thanks. Um, and it's especially wound up around a meal, but not only. I mean, every time it's around a meal, it is used, this Greek word, eucharisto. Jesus did it. When he fed the 5,000, he lifted bread and he broke it. He gave thanks to God and he, and he, and he broke it. He gave thanks. And look at that again. He's giving it. He's not just having thanks inside. But, but it's also used in many, many other places. Um, let, me, let me show you uh, one of them. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Uh, let me get this open here. Uh, it, says, it says in this letter, it says uh, to the church in Thessalonica, it says, Paul says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. God's will in Christ Jesus for us is that we should be giving thanks. And he says in all circumstances. And it's so easy, right, in this time of year especially to, to find ourselves in these challenging. Sometimes Thanksgiving doesn't go the way we want. Sometimes relationships don't go the way we want. Sometimes we don't have the money or or. You know, we just don't have the time or whatever. And Christmas now coming upon us and life is not easy for everybody. But God says, give thanks in all circumstances. The main thing to give thanks for is our relationship with God. He's near us and he's, he will help us. And his love endures forever. Give thanks. Now the other word, and you can find that Eucharisto, by the way, Eucharist, um, throughout the New Testament when, when the word thanks or thanksgiving is being used. But there is another word that's also used, and this may be a bit surprising, but it's charis, C-H-A-R-I-S, which we take to know is grace. It's most commonly translated as grace, which means to receive a benefit, to receive a favor 
one that we didn't earn or deserve, but we receive it. There's grace that comes. And we know it's the grace of God that saves us. It's by God's grace. Well, interestingly enough, sometimes that same word is translated as thanks. And so the same word cherish, when it's used to... Um, well, let me read you a couple verses where it's used. When, when it's used, when we're, when we're giving, when God is giving something of very great value and preciousness to us, our salvation, our freedom, right? We say we're free in Christ. Well, the freedom is we deserve a penalty, a punishment for how we've lived. But Christ pays the price for that, so therefore we're released from it. That's very precious. That's my very life. When God gives us that, that's grace. When we give something that is of the utmost preciousness, the utmost pricelessness back to God, it's called thanks. God appreciates and he sees that if something is sincerely from thy heart, from your heart, when you give that to God for what he's done, for what he's provided, when you return, when you do as the scripture says in the Old Testament, when you give thanks because he's good, it's precious and priceless. So here's a couple of verses. 2 Corinthians let me go there. 2 Corinthians 2.14, it says this, Thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. From, from, to one, a fragrance from death to death, but to the other, a fragrance from life to life. So we, God is leading us and we thank him that he's putting us to work in that process and that others are coming to know him and know eternal life because God is leading us. One more, 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Um, last verse. Um, let's see, 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. Those two words are the same words as for grace. Now, interesting, isn't it interesting that, that we give thanks for a meal, we say grace, right? We're returning to God, to God, the thankfulness, just even for our daily provision, even as the Lord's Prayer says, give us this day our daily bread, what we need to live on. We give thanks. Friends, what a season we're in. Thanksgiving has, has launched us and we're into Christmas. And I pray that each day, you would take time just to stop and remember and give thanks to the Lord because he's good and remember that his steadfast love endures forever. God bless you today, friends. In Jesus' name, amen.